Hi, I'm Ty. And before we start this video, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that watched my last video. I had no idea just how well that video would be received, and I, I can't even put it into words. All of your comments were just so wonderful and kind, and I, I just can't thank you enough. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. That being said, this video is going to be a little different from the last one. So, mild trigger warning, I'm not going to show like blood or guts or anything like that, but if you don't like imagery like this or this, this video isn't for you. But if you can just power through, I guarantee you this video will be very, very interesting. Every now and then, I find myself diving headfirst into internet rabbit holes. Most critical versus Sneeko, creepypastas, anything involving Chris Chan. But a couple weeks ago, my friend sent me this image and, well, I'd be stupid not to talk about it. So before we get into this horrifyingness, I'm going to go over the brief yet hazy history of the term itself. Primarily used by Martin Luther sometime during the 1500s during his protest against the Catholic Church. Translated to Rattenkönig in German. Rattenkönig is also the name of a video game that was released a couple months ago wherein you're a rat whose tail is tied to your dead sibling. Y yeah, nothing good comes from this phrase. It was mainly just an insult to the Pope, or anyone else who was in power who would feed off of the working class, or anyone that's beneath them. There's also an old urban legend that would state that old elder rats would sit on the tails of younger ones and essentially turn them into a throne. He would then force other rats to bring him food and other offerings, and thus creating a rat king. But how these two things would eventually be connected to this isn't really known. But if you just take the elder rat aspect out of the urban legend and just slap the name on it, it does make sense why they would be associated with this. Well that and what else are you going to call this thing? But now let's get to what a rat king actually is. A rat king can range from 3 to 32 rats, possibly even more. It's when a bunch of rats get their tails unintentionally stuck together into a big ball where none of them can escape. No doubt being very terrifying, but also probably very painful. Now, most rat kings actually consist of black rats. Black rats are climbing rats, so because of that, they have this grasping reflex in their tail. The ongoing theory is that over the winter months, when all of the rats are indoors, cuddled up together for warmth, in very enclosed spaces, at some point their tails will grasp at each other unintentionally. And then, once it's mixed with blood, urine, and sebum, it <laughs> Sebum. I'm an adult. All of those mixed together would make it next to impossible to untangle. Some experts even think that rat kings might be even more common than we think. We just might not find as many because temperatures can rise, making it easier for them to escape. Or, more likely, one of the rats could become desperate enough to where they'll either eat their own or another rat's tail off. Apologies to any rat lovers out there, I didn't realize how depressing this video would be. However, this is only a theory as we actually don't have any visual proof of a rat king forming. We have plenty of video of moose shedding their antlers, but nope, no rat kings. We do have videos of rat kings in the wild, which I have shown, but we just don't have any video of one being created. And throughout history, only 58 physical rat kings have been identified, which is probably one of the many reasons why some people still, to this day, question their existence. That and back in the day, people would actually fake rat kings to get people to pay to see them. All they would do is just take a bunch of dead rats and just tie their tails together. Because yeah, who wouldn't want to pay 20 bucks to see this thing? Speaking of paying, you can actually see the world's largest recorded rat king, if that's something you want to do. It's in a museum in Altenburg, Germany, and it has 32 whole rats in it, and was found in a chimney in the year 1828. And because Mother Nature frickin' sucks, squirrel kings also exist, but thankfully they're even more rare. Almost the same thing as rat kings, but just throwing tree sap in the tails. Still just as terrifying and depressing, but thankfully, way way more rare, so that's good. And that's roughly all the information that I can find on Rat Kings. Now, I know what you're thinking, uh, Ty, why are you talking about this? Well, a couple weeks ago, I finished that show where Pedro Pascal helps a gifted child get from one destination to the other while protecting them. No, the other one. There she is. And after I saw this image, it reminded me of a character from the video game. <laughs> this charming fellow is called the Rat King. After being stuck in a hospital for over a decade, these poor infected souls became unintentionally stuck together, somehow finding a way to be more terrifying than this. Essentially, the game devs took this already scary concept and added their own unique twist. I bring this up because this isn't the first time that they've done it. In fact, the idea for this video came from one of the most famous scenes from the show.
no, not, not that scene. Sorry. It's actually the very first scene in the pilot. And in this scene, an epidemiologist talks about the possibility of a fungus evolving to control humans, as they already have the ability to control ants. Fungal infection of this kind is real, but not in humans. True, fungi cannot survive if its host's internal temperature is over 94 degrees. And currently, there are no reasons for fungi to evolve to be able to withstand higher temperatures. But what if that were to change? What if, for instance, the world were to get slightly warmer? Well, now there is reason to evolve. Cordyceps, Aspergillus, any one of them could become capable of burrowing into our brains and taking control, not of millions of us, but billions of us. Billions of puppets with poisoned minds. Now, me being of sound mind and morbid curiosity, I decided to look deeper into this, and don't worry, as terrifying as it sounds, uh, it's actually worse. Say hello to the cordyceps fungus, also known as the zombie fungus. Or maybe they're forbidden Cheeto, but it depends on who you ask. Now, there are over 600 different types of cordyceps, some of which are actually used to treat certain ailments, like respiratory disorders and can even boost the immune system. But only 35 control and create these, well, zombies each controlling a specific species of insect, arthropod, or even arachnids, most of which just burrow its way into the exoskeleton where it'll slowly drain its host of all of its nutrients. It's actually quite fascinating, as most fungus actually grows from and feeds off the dead, cordyceps can do the living and the dead. They can also just straight up control the host. Instead of just slowly digesting it from the inside, Ophiocordyceps unilateris alters the host's behavior. This primarily happens with ants. When cordyceps release their spores, it kind of goes the same way. Except with ants, they'll take it a step further, and slowly take over the nervous system until it has full control of the muscles, becoming the ant's puppeteer. Once the fungus has control of the ant, it'll then force it to climb onto a tree with perfect conditions, while also being as close to the ant colony as possible. Depending on location, if they're in a generally warm forest, they'll either go onto the tree itself or on a twig or branch. But if they're in a rainforest, they'll most likely go into the underside of a leaf. Once it reaches its ideal location, the cordyceps will then force the ants to bite down as hard as it can in what is referred to as the death grip, which is unfortunately the nail in the coffin for the ant. At that point, the cordyceps will absorb the rest of the insides and start sprouting out of the body, sometimes coming out of the head, like the world's most disturbing unicorn. And then it finally releases spores, starting this whole disgusting process all over again. Now, this is the most famous form of the cordyceps. Heck, even Joe Rogan talked about it. It's interesting, too, that you're bringing this up, that it's growing on something else. And that, that seems to be part of nature, right? This sort of symbiotic relationship that some of these mushrooms have with the plants and the, 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 the environment around them. That's a really, really good uh, point. Um, because the mycelium... <laughs> Now, as bad and horrifying as that is, somehow, that isn't even the worst one. Because cicadas have it far, far worse. Mainly because ants, unlike cicadas, have what is called social immunity. You see, over time, ants have actually become really good at detecting problems within their colony. Ants are constantly checking each other for spores and other ailments. And if they find anything, they'll either kick them out, or just straight up kill them as quickly as possible. But sometimes they don't catch them in time, as it takes hours to days for the fungus to emerge. It's pretty random. But yeah, cicadas, they, they don't have that. Now, like I said in the beginning, each type of cordyceps only goes after one species. And the one that goes after cicadas is called Massospora cicadina. I'm pretty sure I said that right. And instead of just straight up controlling them, they, for lack of a better term, enhance them. Once it gets inside the exoskeleton, it'll begin eating away at the abdomen and genitals, replacing them with fungus. And that leads to the biggest difference. This fungus is spread sexually. I'm just glad that they didn't include this part in The Last of Us. Uh, well, I mean, I guess there's that one scene in the show where, they, you know what, never mind. Now, what I mean by enhanced is the fungus produces chemicals. And what they do is not only increase their stamina, but also give them prolonged wakefulness. In other words, they don't sleep. The fungus also makes them hypersexual, sometimes going so far as to make a male flick their wings in a feminine way, in an attempt to spread the fungus even more. Now, I know this is getting a little bit weird, but just bear with me and I pro- no, no, hey, hey, hey! It's also entirely possible that the fungus suppresses their hunger in order to keep them constantly moving. Yet with all that, 
that isn't even the worst part. The fungus will continue to absorb the cicada's body. And the chemicals that they produce are so strong that the cicada can continue to move even after losing half of its body. Should have gone for the head. Tell me that isn't the most disturbing thing you've ever seen. Now this doesn't happen every time, usually they just die by this point, but much like Rat Kings, though they are rare, the fact that this happens at all is still terrifying. Like this is an actual zombie, they aren't pieces of fiction anymore. This cicada is almost completely hollow and yet it's still trying to move. It's just so hauntingly interesting. But there's still one question that needs to be asked. Can Cordyceps evolve to one day infect humans? The answer is sadly unknown. <coughs> But don't worry too much, because the time it would take for the fungus to do that would take thousands if not millions of years. Like I said in the beginning, each type of cordyceps only goes after one specific species. And it's very unlikely that they'll just hop onto another species. But if it were to happen, it wouldn't even be close to the game or show. At the very least, it'll bring new diseases as well as old ones. And it wouldn't infect as quickly. It would still be a big problem as fungal infections are harder to treat. Because their cell structures are just too similar to humans. And it's hard to create a drug or a vaccine that attacks the fungus specifically. But again, very unlikely to happen. So don't worry about running into this thing anytime soon. In conclusion, bugs are terrifying don't go to Australia. I'm just kidding. The real takeaway is the amazing horror movie potential that you have with these things. Think about it, much like that Winnie the Pooh horror movie that like eight people saw. Imagine a bug's life, but in the style of The Last of Us. Or maybe like The Walking Dead and have it go on for five seasons too long. You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. Say, let's pretend this brain is a puny little ant. Yeah, but we can f Did that hurt? We're a lot stronger than you say we are. And you know it. Don't you? How about this? Or even better, let's do a Ratatouille style horror movie where multiple people are being controlled against their will. With this thing as the mastermind. And with that, I yield my time. Thank you so much for watching this nightmare fuel of a video. I hope you enjoyed it, or at the very least learned something new, because I definitely did. And I promise the next video won't have as much nightmare fuel. For the most part. And let me know down in the comments who's your favorite ant. Mine is Antony from Ant-Man 1. Thank you again so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Laters!